Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we should probably start it off just, you know, there was all this algorithm talk last week with Brian. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to start it off kind of and try and maybe uh, appease the algorithm or trick it. Yeah. Just yeah. to see if it maybe helps the, you know, the numbers. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Andrew Tate. Yes. Vir- vi- viscerally destroyed by gambling streamer. Yes. Manosphere absolutely collapses after this army of 12 year old liberals takes them down. Mm hmm. Mr. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you got? Hasanabi takes huge fucking dump into his own mouth and then pukes it back onto Andrew Tate's head. Andrew Tate melts as a result of the sheer toxicity of Hasanabi's huge poop. I would I would watch that. I would definitely watch that. They both fall into an escape capsule that is launched by Elon Musk. Oh. Elon Musk puts his other illegitimate kids in the space capsule with them and he sends them all to Mars. Hmm. Okay, I got one. Mr. Beast gives car away to dying child. Oh, I thought you were going to say Mr. Beast gives head. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. Beast gives sloppy top to Andrew Tate, top G. <laughs> Mr. Beast gives face to. Today, guys. I'm giving head to everyone in this room. <laughs> and then Last to leave this circle gets domed the fuck off. <laughs> By me. Damn. That's just that contestant like pinned up against the glory hole. <laughs> they're, they're like, and then <laughs> they're like, how are you liking it? He's like, oh, dude, he's really good. <laughs> Last to come wins ten million dollars. I think Jimmy's ever gonna answer one of your texts again? After no, yeah. no, yeah, I don't think ever. Yeah. Well, no, no, I think we're not making fun of him. We're just yeah theorizing about a world where he would suck everyone off. Yes, this is twisted, Mister Beast. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It's different from the real one. Yeah, Mister Beef. Yeah, that's who it is. No, I think he, I think he should still be Mister Beast. Yeah, he's yeah, like a, a sexual word. demon. Yeah. Mr. Everyone to enter this circle gets to enter me. <laughs> just a, a fucking pile of people. Just the, building the Tower of Babylon. Just We all got to get inside him. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is the TMT Podcast. This is today's free episode. If you want this episode ad free and extra bonus episode, you can find that right now on our website. <laughs> Holy fuck, Jamie! Can we get a clip of that deer and get hit by that car? Let's live the flying stalkers may soon be solved. If you've never smoked weed at literal Woodstock, you're not a stoner. Goodbye. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Ah, oh, gay as fuck. <laughs> So-called flying stuffing. Look at all these fucking chickens! Malone Brown? Did you hear this whole? No. Malone Brown dick in your mouth? <laughs> no! 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 Please look at all the signs. Fashion your seatbelt. And get ready for the base. Nah, but for real though, Andrew Tate is the fucking man. Yeah? Yeah, man, he's the top G, bro. Yeah. He's the top G. Yeah. It's commentate W. Yeah. You wouldn't get it. Commentate dub. That man is a walking W. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So sick. <laughs> He's fucking everywhere. Yeah. I, like, I don't get it. He's OnlyFans for 16-year-old boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think OnlyFans is OnlyFans for 16-year-old boys. <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is like the, you know, like the Hustler University, like... You know, his whole school where they can like sign up and then they can promote it and get people to sign up and they yeah. get affiliate money, whatever. No, um, it's Herbalife. That's what it is. Yeah. I guess I say it's like OnlyFans because, um, yeah, never mind. What? Well, you know, uh, a lot of those people would say that OnlyFans is fatherless behavior. Yeah. And I think what these kids are doing is also fatherless <laughs> behavior. 
It's the boy version? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's the boy version. <laughs> okay, I see. Tate, it's like, in my opinion, Tate is nothing. It's boys with daddy issues. Yeah. 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 That, that it, love Andrew Tate. Yeah, because they don't have a strong male figure in their life. That's and true, so, yeah. So Tate. This kickboxing, car driving guy. Cigar smoking. Cigar smoking dude is their, is their dude. Here's the thing. What Tate's doing, well, first of all, Tate's been around forever. Really? Yes. He was the one who tweeted a thing like Star Wars oh, is yes. for nerds. Oh, my God. Yeah. And we read that tweet, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, Tate, Tate's been around a long time. Wow. Tate's been around a long time. <laughs> yeah, man. He's been doing his thing, bro. Just grinding. He deserves it. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, no, whatever I'm you said. joking. I'm kidding. No, cut that out. Cody meant that. Yeah. Yeah, I love. I mean, that's why they call him Top G. And I just think what Tate is doing is not anything new. I feel like every three to four years, you're going to get a new generation of like 16 year old kids who are or like 16 to 20 year old men who are kind of, you know, looking for this type of input. You know, before Tate, it was someone else. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that like famous like radio guy like Tom Likas? No. Or was that, oh, that wouldn't have been in Canada, is maybe. This, are you going to get me? Uh, that was, no. It seems like it, Tom Likas. No. It's it's actually like okay. He might have even just been a local LA thing, but Tom Likas was like this crazy, yeah, barking white dude who's like his whole bit was just bringing women on radio and like calling them dumb and. So this has been a thing. Yeah, like I mean, male self help has been around for a minute. You know, it's just I think yeah, it, but it, I don't think it's ever been this mainstream uh i just think it gets it continue oh you ever i mean i think in the 50s it was pretty mainstream yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point good point your wife not washing dishes fast enough yeah yeah <laughs> put her on xanax yeah we've got some tips for you yeah. <laughs> your wife not shutting the fuck up all the time <laughs> is your wife thinking about talking <laughs> give her this tonic <laughs> should shut her up and keep her with the kids the right way you know? 100% of women are suffering from hysteria. <laughs> Leave them catatonic in the house with nothing to do <laughs> except sit on the washing machine. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, then, you know, before, uh, if, you're a, if you're a Tate stan, relax. This is not us telling you how to live your life. Um, but, yeah, I just don't. I think this is more extreme because he has this whole racket behind it. Yeah. So there's incentive to post him. Right. But I think that's why this version of it is so pervasive. Yeah. I also think it's because he's really good at talking. He's, he's very really, charismatic. really, he's really charismatic. He's really good mm -hmm. at using simple analogies and metaphors to like get his point across, which just makes you seem smart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like everything, every every point he tries to make, he'll be like, "If I get a new car, yeah, and and leave it in the garage, yeah, and someone try it, and you know these kids are like, oh yeah, it's so simple, yeah. All you had to do is talk about it in terms of a Lambo, yeah. And now I get it. I think it's so funny. It's like that. women are not cars, dude. <clears throat> well, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I wish they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be careful, be careful with that analogy. Yeah, I'm the wish I could be married to a car. No, I'm just the I'm just the neurodivergent one who takes it literally. Run into Andrew Tate at a coffee shop. It's like it's my girlfriend, and it's just a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah. You told you me. You said, like, there's that it's one like thing a you car. said about you know. If anyone were to get in it, I'd be upset. Like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm afraid that you're looking at her right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want her. To, I don't want her to like <laughs> drive away with it. Um, yeah, it. It's just sort of like, who cares? Mm -hmm. That's the really interesting part to me. What? How? I mean, it, it is because it's mostly kids, but how does anyone give this much of a shit about what he, he's saying? Yeah, I know. That's that's what that's what surprises <clears throat> me, too. He's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen someone blow up as fast as he just did mm -hmm. in the last, like, two months. Mm -hmm. Like, no one. Yeah. Like, who? Like, rice gum? Who's the last person... Yeah, to have like an explosive, but it's a weird thing because he's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, it's just like who cares? Yeah, I, I know that's a really hot take, but people get really fucking worked up. Like, oh, this guy fucking doesn't like girls. Like, so what? It's like leave him in Romania and like talking to himself. 
Well, I know, but the problem is he's not in Romania talking to himself. He's talking to millions and millions of kids who all are just eating up everything he's saying. Yeah, sure. Like, I, he is the most popular person right now on the internet, I would say. Yeah, but I think when people bring him on their podcasts who don't have even half a percent of his charisma and try to go at it with him or like, do you think you're a bad person? Yeah. And he just fucking bulldozes them verbally. Again, like that's, oh yeah. He's okay. just selling more. Like that's yeah, yeah, why yeah. I'm like. So I, you're saying don't do that. Don't have Yeah, I think like people are stupid. Like you don't, you're not going to, in no universe can you argue with that man. Mm-hmm. You have fucking, you, you're going to bring that guy on your podcast and you have like, you have ad reads later for um, Framebridge and whoever the fuck else. And you think you're going to say what you want <laughs> versus that guy yeah. who has doesn't answer to that kind of shit? Yeah. He can say whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. <laughs> like you're going to lose. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it doesn't help that he has that uh really imposing background and presentation. Yeah. Wait, what you, the set of his show or what? I mean, yeah, he does look like he's sitting in the Death Star, but also or it's like a pseudo Joe Rogan set, but yeah. like no, I just mean the fact that he's just like oh, yeah, yoked yeah, yeah. as fuck. Yeah. His hand is bigger than a basketball. Yeah. And he's sitting there chiefing on a massive cigar, just being like, you're fucking you this, you fucking that. And everyone who brings them on their podcast looks like they've just witnessed a car crash. Yeah. They have n- you could see it all in their eyes. They're like, oh, fuck, why did we do this? <laughs> he's so good at analogies. Fuck. Yeah. And it's why all, don't we do that? And it's all these people who can't like debate. They can't argue. Hassan Wait, was- did Hassan do a good job? Because I saw people on TikTok being like, man, like he he- Shut him down, like he, 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 classic Tate. Like as soon as he faces a real adult, he gets shit on. But he, I watched a clip of it, and it just didn't really seem like. I mean, it didn't. I'm not saying anything bad about Hassan, but it didn't really seem like a victory on either part. It just kind of seemed like two dudes arguing. Yeah, I think he rattled his cage, Hassan. Um, uh, I think the best take I've seen on it is that Hassan was able to establish that. Tate sometimes cannot navigate his own cognitive bias. Like, he himself doesn't know where he stands sometimes. Uh, they did it all around this thing about, like, empirical evidence. But, like, as I'm saying this, anyone who likes Tate, they don't fucking care about this. Yeah. That When Tate is like, you're boring, you're boring me. It's like, that's who likes him. Mm-hmm. So, you're, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not going to win. Yeah. Who are, like, I think, if anything, the people who bring them on their show... Are full like are mostly full of shit because they don't actually care to convince him of anything. Yeah, and in their mind they're like, well, as long as I visually disagree, then it's fine. Yeah, and it's like they're doing the same thing, like bringing Tate onto your show guarantees views, and you're you know you're doing that to pump your numbers, and he knows by being on your show he's going to recruit some of your fucking eighteen year old male audience. So. I think the whole thing is a racket between everyone who engages with him. Mm. I think there are a few people who actually seek to kind of debunk what he's saying because they disagree. But those aren't the people that, you know, get him on their show. Or- so you're saying you're saying the shows that reach out, you know, maybe in the emails are like, yo, would you come on the show? And he's like, yeah, for sure. And he's like, could you do the women ain't shit? thing <laughs> no i think they don't even have can to you just it. could just you know do your thing yeah you know <laughs> that's we'll, the, we'll argue with it a little yeah. bit it'll be great <laughs> that's what they're hoping for yeah yeah just they do pr- the whole women are property thing can you say that <laughs> fuck that'd be great for our ratings they want the clips man they want the clips hey guys we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode movement in a tiny apartment in southern california two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules With fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs, Movement grew into one of the fastest-growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. These two college dropouts tag-teamed the watch industry, and now Movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from your screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank at all. Uh, and they design it all out of their California headquarters. We've had a chance to look at their minimal sport dive watch, yeah. and it's very sleek and professional looking. Uh, you'd never know it could dive down 100 meters into the water, uh, which sometimes we do. Uh, big divers over here. Movement watches have the look and quality of a 400 to $500 watch you're paying for at a department store, but cost a fraction of the price. 
because they were built online and own their own process from start to finish. You get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free, and if you don't love it, you can ship it right back for free. I have to spend all day in front of my computer, and every and my ever-scroll blue light filtering glasses are a game changer. It really helps with eye strain and poor sleeping patterns. And if you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash tmg. Again, that's mvmt.com slash tmg. Yeah, look at that. Andrew Tate. Look at this! More search. Look at this. The Mr. Beast. Good call on this. Google Trends here. Andrew Tate in the last. What? What's the date of like the spike there? In the last couple months, is like double the amount of people googling Mr. Beast yeah. now. You know, and I'm. And, and I mean, that's a commentate W right there. Commentate dub right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Commentate dub, bro, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And and here's the thing. I get that it's a young, impressionable audience. Fuck off with that, honestly. It's not to you directly. Like, I say fuck off with that because what I'm saying is, in terms of the scope of the entire internet and, like, people, I would argue that no one is really concerned about what is affecting children with the amount of shit that's on the internet that, like, can poison them. Right. If, if we as a society believe that the internet was like a generally bad thing for kids, we'd have, I feel like, would have agreed to like have some process that prevents a child from even using the internet. I, I mostly think it's interesting that, like, think of the influence that Mr. Beast has, right? Had. Ha- had. Yeah, sorry, before he, before he became a walking L. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm kidding, but... Like, think of the influence that Mr. Beast currently has, the amount of people that watch him globally, and then double that in terms of the interest that Andrew Tate currently has on Earth. Let me highlight like, That's some. a fucking f- crazy phenomenon. Yeah, because Andrew Tate's a car crash, and everyone's looking at it. But let's, hi- let's highlight this, dude. Okay, you see that big spike? Here we go. This is the fucking um, the internet fast money show. Yeah. You see this trend right here? Yeah. You see this big spike? Okay. What was this? I would wager that this was the Squid Games thing. Yes. Yeah. So Mr. Beast had to spend millions of dollars. Uh, and don't don't back it with facts. Let's just make it up. I'm going to wager that's the Squid Games thing. He spent all that money, and he had that moment. Now look at Tate. All you- <laughs> Tate just needed cigars, height. And a, a strong sense of um, oratory skill. Look at that. Are you are you a stan? <laughs> I'm saying, boys, that you don't need much. Doesn't take much to get your moment on the internet. See, you just gotta you just gotta get a few cars, a few extra inches of body, and uh, you can say whatever you want. I I think that. Um... I think that like instilling confidence in young males is not a bad thing at all. I don't think. Here but we go. he does it he does it by shitting on women. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's what he does. No, but I'm saying I'm saying I, I it just goes in line with what we were saying before. Yeah. His influence I think is just a I mean, a bad thing in general just because it's not just kids watching his videos and being like oh yeah i can do things Mm. i should boss up and start working out and all this shit Mm -hmm. it's like i should do that and i should think women aren't anything (laughs) uh yeah I i would argue though that um i think honestly andrew almost promotes like a like a mig tau type lifestyle yeah because i think the funny irony is you can go to hustlers university but at the end of the day you're not Andrew Tate so a lot of those dudes are gonna like have that attitude and they're gonna go out into the world and they're gonna try to encounter like women in the wild and then women will just be like mm. and <laughs> yeah they just un- they just unswipe that guy yeah, yeah. they just unmatch him yeah so I <laughs> it's like when dudes sign up for like pickup artist things like how many of those guys actually yeah I don't know there's this is a whole world that I don't really even know enough about to like even speak on. I yeah, just, true. I think the whole hysteria around him is because everyone's bored 
and he is not a new thing. Some fucking big buff guy or just some dude who's like, women hate you, you know, care for yourself, whatever weirdo message he wants to put out there. It's not the first time this has happened. Yeah, true. You know, I think historically in society, um, <laughs> men have had a general disdain for women. Mm. <laughs> so I think it's funny when he's like, look at society for the last thousands of years. You know, it's just like, women didn't talk then. They shouldn't talk now. <laughs> it's just like, all right. Yeah. It's crazy to me. I think it's particularly crazy because this shit is about to burn up. The, the earth? earth? The earth? This shit is done. It's over. <laughs> like, who cares? Like, if there was ever a time to let women have a little fun, it could be now. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got like 40 years left. Yeah. That's the, uh, at least, you know, that's what the news tells me. <laughs> so you're, yeah, okay. So you are anti-Tate then? <laughs> I'm not anti. I just think like, all these messages he's putting out there is like there's not enough time to do the things he's saying. Right. You know, he's like, young men, you need to build your kingdom and this and that. It's like they won't have the time. Yeah, right. They're going to get to college and it's like, hey, air costs money and air conditioning is illegal in yeah. California and there's no water um, and you got to you gotta learn how to survive off onions. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tate will have a rocket ship and he'll be up there with Jeff. Okay. Still doing his show. Right. Build your you build your kingdom down there, buddy. I'm just, trying, man. But no, nah, just keep building. I just it. Keep onion, working. At I got it. onion breath. Keep working at it all the time. No one will talk to That's me. That's the problem with women. Two thousand years ago, onion breath wouldn't be a problem. No, but dudes don't talk to me either. Yeah, my well, bre I reek like onions. It it comes out <laughs> of my pores, and no one likes being around me anymore. <laughs> I snorted. <laughs> We'd like to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, MeUndies. Have you heard about the legendary underwear brand that's totally taken over the podcasting world? Famous for their buttery soft undies and brawlets, MeUndies loves podcasts just as much as you do. It's like you're made for each other. Get to know the underwear brand on every podcaster's lips. There's so much more than undies. I love MeUndies. They are so comfortable and I can wear them for every occasion. Racing? Oh, yeah. Touring the country? Oh, yeah. And do you want to know a little secret? I'm wearing a pair right now. I actually am. Everyone knows me undies for their super soft undies and comfy bralettes. Mm -hmm. But did you know they make other stuff too? We're talking durable, cushy socks that will make your feet sing. We're talking super stretchy loungewear. We're talking daily tees, shorts, rompers that add a little silky softness to your everyday. They even make hoodies for your dog <gasps> so you can match every important person in your life. Available in sizes XS to 4XL and tons of colors and prints make MeUndies your destination for all things soft and sustainable. These, fucking, these fuckers are actually really comfy. I wear them every single day. I actually do. They're the only boxers I own now. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash TMG. That's MeUndies.com slash TMG. If you, if you get a high off of the commentate W, like do your thing, I guess. And if you don't, yeah. Enjoy being a walking L. Yeah, enjoy being a walking L. I just think he naturally appeals to younger people because, like, those simple metaphors, like, oh, yeah. And then when they grow up, you realize, like, life is a lot more complex than that. Right. Like, you're not going to give a shit about all that, like, building your kingdom and going to the gym if, like, your fucking mom suddenly falls ill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. You know, or, like, there's, like, other shit that can happen in your life that it's it's not about just, like, looking in the mirror and like appreciating yourself yeah. all the time yeah it's like yeah i'm fucking building my kingdom and your friend's like i'm addicted to opiates all right just boss up man <laughs> yeah yeah no i have a crippling opiate addiction just fucking boss up <laughs> just join hustlers university it's like, i don't know bro especially because the earth is going to burn up so like get out there and do that's something. the real message yeah there's there's not much time left to have fun just fucking ride a dune buggy go yeah. go on a hike yeah right <laughs> Right. There's fun shit out there. Yeah. Go rent a low speed jet ski with your friends. Like well, low speed. Yeah. That's not fun. 
Uh, Why do you want a low speed jet? Just start, start small. Like a pontoon boat? Yeah. That can be fun. <laughs> that can be fun, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Those Life. fuckers go slow, but. Yeah. You can drink on those things. Life is like a go kart. <laughs> oh, here we go. Car analogy. You can have a fast go kart, and you can go out there and compete with the best just to find out that you're only good at your only midfield. You're mid. You can go out there and get fast just to find out you're mid. Mm hmm. But sometimes you can go out there with your friends mm. in a group of rental carts, mm -hmm. and everything's the same. And you get to smash those motherfuckers, brutalize them. Not really. Six seconds split off their pace. Uh, Cash, don't talk. Uh, <laughs> I think Alex beat you once. That was a fluke. <laughs> the point I'm making is sometimes life is better when you go slow because your friends can be there with you. They can catch up. That's a good one. That's a good analogy. Thanks, dude. That's just so well packaged. Yeah. That I was able to absorb that info really easily. You can picture your friends. A, yeah. In a bunch of slow go karts. I don't really have friends, but let's work on that. Let me try one. Life to me is like surfing. Okay. You know, most of the times you're getting slammed against the, the beach. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But sometimes you get slotted. LOL, yeah, Cody's right. Sometimes you do get slammed against a bitch, but <laughs> yeah. also, like, you do get slutted out sometimes. It's, it's just, like, I don't know, man. You do whatever. Like, here, here's the, I think, sorry, not to harp on it, but I think the bigger thing with the internet here is that uh, <laughs> this is why the internet is dangerous, you know? Mm -hmm. Some of us were destined to be corny mm. or lame, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like some of us should have been born in Indianapolis and stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I just have to make fun of Zach in Indianapolis <laughs> any chance that I can get. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, lo I love Indianapolis. I had a great time there. He's like, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. No, but I'm saying like in life, a lot of us were destined to be fucking corny. Mid, if you will. Right. Some, a lot of us were destined to be mid. Mm. And the internet like poisoned us. It's like that dude from Love Island, you know? Who? Earring, Isaiah. Okay. The new one. It's like, he had, like you could tell he's just kind of like maybe a troubled kid from South Dakota. And then you see all the internet that got injected into him. Yep, yep. With like his haircut and the earring. And he's saying all that fucking love, alpha female shit, shit's lit. Like shit's he's, lit. He's just like a fucking walking algorithm. Yeah. What did he say again? They done you do the you the yeah. dirtiest. It's like damn, all the good people getting done dirty. All the good people getting done dirty, you know. And and I expect the worst every fucking day of my life. That guy was just supposed to be a bartender with family tattooed on his uh, forearm. Yeah, and that was it. And he was gonna meet like maybe one or two girls in his local town, and then that was it. And th so I think like the internet just gets people really fired up because it affords them all these options. Yeah. Additionally, I think single people have it, you know, I empathize with being single now because it like the concept of apps is so shitty in that I think I think like young dudes have a lot of frustration because and I think young women equally when they go out on dates, how easy is it for someone to just like in like four seconds into the date be like, this guy's boring. Yeah, I got four more matches in my or I got four more girls matched in my phone. Uh, we're going to drink. I'm cutting this off. I'm actually going to go hit up another one, you know? Yeah. Like, I think generally um, that's where a lot of that angst is coming from. Yeah. It's like a inability to make connection. Yeah. Because I think uh, I, I think some, I think a, a decent relationship just zaps a lot of people out of this mind state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to hate women and then I found one that, like, loved me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found a girl that like sucked my shit so good and like I just stayed. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, man. Shit's been cool. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, unsubscribe from the hustler's mindset. Yeah. And life has been great ever since. <laughs> no, no. They're like, I'm still subscribed. Yeah. Like it's got good workout tips and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll still browse. I don't really connect with like all like. I the... feel bad for most of the guys in there now. <laughs> Another interesting thing that. <laughs> Oh, you have a girlfriend, dude? Fucking L, bro. Yeah, L, bro. That's fine. <laughs> I'm cool with being an L. 
if being an L is like just having a girl every day, that's fine with me. <laughs> like having someone that loves me, that's pretty lit. I think that's the interesting part to me about how like uh or or that to me is the good example of how life gets more complex. Cause some of those dudes think they want to fuck around a lot. I don't know, man. I think when I think of the happiest people on earth, the first person that pops in my mind is Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> <laughs> He just seems like he's in a he's in a really good place. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. happy. Yeah. He definitely doesn't seem like he's trying to prove anything or He 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 clickbaited some images the other day of like it was him like uh walking down the aisle with like some girl. Okay. And he's like, I finally did it. And all the comments were like, No, nah, no, nah, dude, fake news. <laughs> please. Please, Dan, please. <laughs> no, Dan. No. We lost. Yeah. We lost him. Yeah. <laughs> Common Dan L, L right yeah. here. Walking L, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I, that was the funny. Hold on, just side side note. Yeah, that was sorry, the funniest part I'm about rambling. Uh, that the first episode of the U.S. Love Island. Yeah. When Isaiah walked out, <laughs> and then the blonde girl like stepped forward for him. Yeah. Or actually, he first walked out, and she was like, "Ooh, dangly earring." Gotta watch out for that one or yeah. something like that. Sounded like she was making fun of him. And then Sarah was the host was like, All right, step forward if you find him attractive. And she stepped forward. And she was like, What changed? And she was like, Oh, I saw he had family tattooed on his forearm, so that really matters to me. So I was like, I was like, that's what did it for you? <laughs> that's so, what changed your mind. So that's proof that tattoo works. <laughs> We've been hating on that shit. That thing works. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently. And look, let me just throw this out there, bro. I didn't have strong male figures in my life either. Mm. That's so why you're a Tate stan. Yeah, no, I understand why. Like, if if you're a, like a young dude, just raising himself on an iPhone, and then you see this guy who's like, "I can teach you how to have this." Yeah, naturally, like you're gonna want to like know more. Um, I just think uh, the hysteria doesn't consider the fact that it's just right now. Then those kids have like a couple years in real life and then they can see if any of that shit really works for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I was getting to is like, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like guys that are like, yeah, no, I want to, I want to get pussy. And some girls like, I like your eyes. He's like, well, stop that. <laughs> I, I think you're like, I think you're frustrated a lot of the time, but like, I think you're like a good person deep down. Oh, <gasps> What are you doing to me? Oh, ouch, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is this feeling? Why am I sitting Stop. down? Oh, I'm like getting content. Yeah. Stop. I don't want to go to no, the No, no, no. I want to get pussy. <laughs> I want to go out and get get I want to I want to make you dinner. Oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> the irony is is that they would look at this and be like, "Yeah, that's the problem." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when a girl likes you and you like her back, you don't want to do things anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's just the internet. It's fucking everybody up. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it, it's it's only right that this thing burns up. The earth? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think God in the universe is just watching us go nuts, and he's like, all right, yeah, time's up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Asteroid. He's just going to flick one rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to hear us planet. all collectively like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Or he's going to call Putin and be like, press a button. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. That's the that's why I say we're bored. We're only talking about this shit because there's nothing else going on. <laughs> there's nothing else happening. We have nothing to do. We yeah, there's no much. wars or like anything. Well, I think also people want to <laughs> people want to be distracted. No, yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, there's wars going on all the time. There really is, yeah. There's nothing... Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Skip the grocery store. Spend more time soaking up the summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfasts, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. You going away this summer? Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. 
Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule. Foolproof step-by-step recipes means a joyful cooking experience in a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. I love HelloFresh because it saves me a ton of time and energy. And you already know what my favorite recipe is. The turkey meatballs. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's the bibimbap, of course. It's delicious, and I'm always in the mood for it. Kelsey and I love having it for dinner. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use code TinyMeat16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use the code TinyMeat16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. If you do realize this entire episode now is going to be on every... Potentially every Tate stand. Is it? Yeah. It's Fuck, just, I don't want that. Yeah. That's why I'm being very um, clear and thorough about what I'm saying. What did I say? <laughs> you said he's dangerous. I yeah. said he's dangerous? Yeah. Because hmm. I pay attention to you, man. I care about you. I'm listening. I'm a good listener. I mean, would you say that he's a good influence? No, I, I think there are... Uh, pr- I think... There are fundamentally two aspects of his philosophy that I, I'm i curious how people reconcile this. Um, the first one is he sort of encourages men to, I, and I could be wrong about this, but it seems like he encourages men to kind of have a fuck everyone attitude, right. just do right by yourself, which is fine. I think a lot of that's, people- That's what I'm saying. Okay, so instilling confidence in men is fine. Sure. That's fine. We probably need more of that. Uh, but that's that's not what I'm- saying it is like i think it's beyond instilling confidence like i think it when i say like he is giving this more elaborate version of like fuck bitches get money um which is like you know do what it takes to uh boss up you know it it kind of like it seems like he's encouraging people to sort of like be ruthless in a way yeah like do what's best for you and and it doesn't matter because i've seen him talk about like you don't have real friends and you know this and that uh but whatever i basically the point i'm trying to arrive to is that it seems like if you're encouraging a lot of people to have a fuck everyone attitude and who cares about the next man kind of thing isn't that kind of bad like philosophically isn't that bad if everyone is just out for themselves and no one really thinks in terms of like working together you know establishing friendships if everyone's just like always back to the wall like pointing a knife at yes everyone. yes 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 that's it, essentially what i'm saying too yeah. yeah like it's fine to it's fine to tell dudes to like boss up and get your money up and, yeah you know whatever. all that stuff and be confident and everything but like mm-hmm. the ultimate goal should be not fucking a bunch of women and treating them like property mm. you know like he says like if i have a woman like i'm gonna fuck around on her but she can't like that's stuff yeah, like that yeah i don't really think that's because that just instills this idea that women again like aren't worth anything right i think the ultimate goal should be like being a positive Mm -hmm. like male role model for the people in your life like being monogamous getting married having a family being a good father right yeah like isn't that shouldn't that be the the message eventually i think that's what tate claims to profess as well though because he always he he also has clips of saying like uh you know it uh, women should be in their traditional role and when my grandmother was this age no one cared about what job she had and this and that people were more amazed and impressed by the amount of people that were born from this one human mm. but i get that's so i guess philosophically what i'm saying is like that part to me seems like a bit of a contradiction if you're saying like you know fuck bitches get money everyone doesn't matter just do right by you but also like uh you know <laughs> build your kingdom and find your queen and uh make sure she doesn't do it it's like they yeah. kind of seem like opposites yeah yeah i agree and the other thing i think is interesting is there's a lot of um professing like get the bag get your money but then um there's a lot of uh I guess material saying like don't conform right that it seems like that's a general idea that comes from Tate which is like you know I can't be canceled I can do what I want uh don't conform for money do it you know uh get your money in a way where people can't tell you what to do 
And, you know, he's not unique in that message. You know, there are comedians that feel this way. There's, there's a lot of people that feel this way. But I think what's interesting is that if you're telling someone get the bag, right, and let's say that's a brand deal, and that brand deal can be life-changing for themselves, their family, or whatever, it's like there's a bit of an opposite there too. It's like if you don't have shit and this is your opportunity to get a little bit of something, on one hand, they would tell you go get it. But then on the other hand, you would be shamed for maybe conforming to a message or like after you take that brand deal, maybe you adjust your presentation because you want to attract more of these opportunities. Yeah. And it seems like on one hand, they would say, oh, you're being business minded and you're looking after yourself and you're bossing up. But then on the other hand, they would say, oh, look at you. You're fucking you're just a little cuck who's willing to do whatever. It's like it just seems that there's a lot of inconsistency. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why people had such a hard on for that little clip with Hassan, because even though it was so seemingly inconsequential, I think people feel that there are some just juxtapositions in Tate's message that like got kind of highlighted in that moment. Ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who gives a shit what I have to say? Like I've been with the same girl for 10 years. Like yeah. <laughs> L. L. <laughs> Fucking L, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that's what they would say, but. I don't know, man. I think the other things can make you happy. All right, well, it's going to be fun being all over the stand accounts. Yeah, so I'm, please uh, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to be on those things. The manosphere? I mean, you're, yeah, who I cares mean, what we think? They like We are beta cocks. That's fine. There. Now you can't. Yeah. Now you can't say it. That's fine. I just called myself a beta cuck. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about monkeypox. Okay. Okay. Luke, can you search it's a Twitter thread, and the the uh, the term that you're going to be looking for is piss pigs. Hi. So I have monkeypox. Not fishing for any sort of sympathy, but since I'm all, I'm already known for being pretty unabashed on the internet, I figure I'd give an honest account of how I got it and how my symptoms manifested to hopefully educate anyone curious. So strap in. All right. Um. So this whole saga really begins mid-June. Um, I finally managed to catch COVID, uh, isolating for three weeks. <laughs> I like uh, how realistically you're <laughs> reading this. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, pretty, okay, this is pretty rough for this dude because he's got uh, no sex or making any content for three weeks. Um, he was desperate to get back to work. Uh, like, yes, I'm a slut and all that, but sex is both my life and my livelihood. If I'm not making content, I can't pay my bills. Uh, so I finally get back into the swing of things, uh, literally and, and a, and, and attended a friend's birthday orgy on Saturday the 9th. I've been watching the news on monkeypox, but the general feelings on it really were and still are developing by the day. So I nor anyone else uh, were especially worried. Have you ever been to a birthday orgy? I haven't, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that adventurous. Yeah, no, I haven't <laughs> either. I've been to no orgies. Yeah, in my life, I let did, alone birthday ones. I, the only thing I'm curious about. Orgies, no, I went to a Christmas orgy actually. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Nice. Yeah. No, it was oh, yeah. Easter one. No, no, no yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I did have a family Thanksgiving day <laughs> orgy. That was kind of weird. Yeah. I was like, who's I was like, who's cooking the turkey? And that was my uncle all bounded up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's your turn to baste him. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff him. Yeah. It's time to put some stuffing in there. Oh, no, that was a scene from Perverse Family. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Th the Thanksgiving Perverse <laughs> Family <laughs> edition. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day Perverse Family yeah. video. It's just a fucking handful of like cornbread going into an ass. <laughs> Someone just paused at work. They're like, nope, nope, nope. I got to get this done. All right. So, Babe the Pig Boy says. <laughs> Especially since there have been only two confirmed cases in my entire county and this group was all locals and the host of that group was a good friend and a nurse. So I trusted their judgment in still having the event happen. Uh, it was a great time. I think I came into sexual contact. Uh, so it was somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 20 different men. That's crazy, man. That's like... That's a baseball team. What? <laughs> That's a baseball team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> 
That is two task forces. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. You could, that's a fucking, that's a football game. <laughs> Isn't it eight per side? No, it's 11 per side. It's 11? Oh, shit. So uh, <laughs> we're down two men. Yeah. What, what's that foul called when, they're, when they don't have enough dudes on the field? Kyle, I'm testing your sports knowledge. You would get more for having it. It's a, only a foul if you have more. It's only a foul if you have more. Oh, so you can be under. Foul for, yeah, that'd be kind of funny to penalize the team for being at a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just the ref being a little, uh, you know, hey, not enough guys. Yeah. Need to up the ratio. Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Liquid Death. You may have started seeing strange tall boys of beer in the bottled water section of your local stores. Don't be scared. It's just water. Why is it called Liquid Death? Why? Because they're bringing death to plastic, and 10% of the profits from every can sold are donated to help kill plastic pollution. There are three new sparkling flavors as well. Mango Chainsaw, Severed Lime, mm -hmm. and Bury It Alive. Man, these things are tasty. I actually really like the flavor. Right there. Hmm? What kind of flavor do you got? I got some Mango Chainsaw right here. Yeah, I'm drinking Severed Lime. Really is tasty. Truly. Yeah. And I like drinking water out of a can. Yeah, me too. Um, for some reason, it's it feels a little bit more refreshing when you pull like a super cold one from the fridge, mm -hmm. like after a run. I love doing that. Yeah. Um, by the way, all of their flavors have three grams of agave nectar in them. Ooh. You could drink these at a party or a concert, and nobody would give you shit for not drinking. Uh, also, drink it at the gym. Give it to your kids at school and drink it while pregnant. It's funny. <laughs> Replace soda and other sugary drinks or weak flavored sparkling water with something that actually has flavor. Get liquid death at all big retailers like Amazon, Target, Albertson, Safeway, 7 Eleven, or Sprouts, and get free shipping on their crazy limited edition merch at liquiddeath.com slash TMG. Uh, that's liquiddeath.com slash TMG. Anyway, uh, in all the following days, once I was back to being sexually active, I made sure to check in with my body. <laughs> To make sure I wasn't experiencing any symptoms, uh, as based on all the research I'd done, uh, monkeypox is only contagious when you have symptoms. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so 15 to 20 guys, that's what he said, right? Yeah, 15 to 20 guys. Thursday comes around, uh, he's getting nervous about monkeypox. Uh, he seemed like... No, no, no. The following Monday, I was feeling totally fine. Filmed with two daddies. <laughs> Hell yeah. Had a great time. Still definitely no symptoms. Uh, I knew I had plans to make... Uh, made to go to another orgy on Thursday. Nice. So I took the days leading up off from sex to minimize any risk of getting or spreading anything. Hell yeah, he's on a bendy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thursday comes around. Uh, he got pretty nervous about monkey pox. Uh, seemed like every day the conversation about it was getting more and more intense. Spent the whole day doing research, reaching out to medical friends, get their opinions. Pretty much everyone and everything said the same thing. There's only a few cases in your county. Risk is incredibly low. Uh, so I made the educated risk to attend the orgy on Thursday. Wowzers did that blow up in my fucking face in the end. <laughs> this orgy was a piss orgy thrown by some <laughs> friends. Even though it wasn't... You ever, been, you ever been to a piss orgy? No. Oh, okay. No. No. I've been to a pissed off orgy. Mm. It's generally a lot of angry, angry people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're sucking my dick bad. <laughs> All right, so even though it wasn't officially affiliate, <laughs> wow. Even by though the way, I'm not like, I just want to say like this is just there's a lot of stuff going on that I just had no. Maybe I'm just too normie. Yeah. Too NPC. Yeah. But a piss orgy just was a new term to me. I had no idea that those types of things were even going on. Yeah, I'm not gonna pretend I knew about it, but <laughs> like, I guess given what I've heard about Bergheim, I guess it's sort of like, oh, yeah, but that's Germany. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, Germany is not the leader in sexual. They're known for like fucked up porn and stuff. But I don't think they're the like leader. German fart porn, you know. I don't think they're the leader in that anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. But I just, I, I still like a, it's, it's in a foreign country. Like when you hear about those stories, you're like, oh yeah, it's fucking in Germany. Like they're crazy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, just like yeah. If I ever go to Europe, maybe I'll stop by and see what kind of crazy shit they got going on. That's fair. In there, right? I, I guess, yeah. I guess with all the sheer amount of kink stuff on OnlyFans, I agree with you in that, like, I've never heard of one. Or not agree, but, like, I'm with you in that I've never heard of one. But reading this, my brain goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> like what? Like, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's fair. 
A couple. I mean, I guess I guess what maybe it is is that like if it, if he was like another OnlyFans creator was doing a piss orgy and it was like mm. a work thing, mm. but it just it's just by like thrown by some friends. The sidemen of OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're twenty guys <laughs> and we're all going to piss on each other <laughs> for the next hour. Who can guzzle more piss? Twenty verse one. <laughs> I'm gonna gurgle, gurgle all the piss. Gurgle? <laughs> I'm gonna gurgle. <laughs> it's called a Chewbacca party. <laughs> Everyone keeps peeing in his mouth, and they see how long he can bounce it around in there. Mm. Oh damn it! <laughs> I smelled that. <laughs> I could smell that. Oh, Sorry. rough. All right, so even though it wasn't officially f affiliated with it, it was advertised as a pre-wet and hot orgy. What is wet and hot? What is wet and hot? Hmm, is this a riddle? Well, wet and hot is What is a wet and hot and comes out of a tube? Piss. It's a big piss kink event that happens in Palm Springs. Oh. It was what brought me to Palm Springs the first time I had visited. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the pre-game. Mm -hmm. Pre-wet and hot, yeah, just to... Damn, what if it's super methodical? It's just, and it's just kind of like electro like music and just tons and tons of piss. It's not even coming out of penises. They're just like in buckets. Right. And they like hire a crew to kind of like pour it on people. <laughs> They're just like a there's like a pee rain machine. And everyone's just partying beneath it, like, oh my God, so much fun. And then just dudes on their phones like texting, like they're just like writing emails yeah. and it's just super regular. Yeah. It's not even that turned up yeah. and crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like clothed. No, it's just like yeah, a normal festival. You got to go to the water booth. Yeah. And you got to pay like, it's five bucks for a bottle of piss? Come on. Yeah. It's like 90 degrees out here. <laughs> yeah. People are dying out here. You can't. <laughs> One guy double. F it's, nine, it's fucking nine bucks for a bottle of piss. One guy double fisting, not literally, but like, you know, he's got two bottles of pee. <laughs> and he walks up to his friend and his, and his friend's a bit more like, Con, like conservative in the way that he consumes. Yeah, he's like, "You want this one? I'm gonna go get another." Is that piss or Molly piss? Uh, this is just piss. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. You, you, you don't want Molly piss? Nah, nah. I'm, I'm just taking it easy. Yeah. <laughs> and then like some guy walks by, like he's like, "You want me to pee on you?" He's like, "Nah, no. I uh, I got a I got a spritz earlier. I'm good." Yeah. The secret is, they charge you so much for piss here that you just piss in a sunscreen bottle and bring it in. Security yeah. will never they have no take his. Clue. They have no clue. Yeah, so I've just been drinking my own piss all day. It's just a couple of gay guys <laughs> passing around a fucking emptied out aerosol. <laughs> yeah, can. yo, let me get some of that. <laughs> nice. <sighs> yeah. Um. Anyway, so so keep going. Yeah, it's been canceled. So this pr this wet and hot orgy in Palm Springs has been canceled two years prior, thanks to COVID. So people were really intent on going to this one. Uh, plenty of people who are flying into town from all over, including places where MP was more prevalent, were attending this orgy. See, this, all the stupid pandemic movies, they try to make them all scary. They should have did it this way. If one of them was smart and been like, oh, what if we started the the pandemic in an orgy? Mm, yeah. Everyone would have watched that. Yeah. That could have been the euphoria of pandemic films. Yeah. Whole bunch of people fuck each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were sucking and fucking. <laughs> and then, okay, sorry. This is the one right here. This is. So I attend the orgy, have a great time, guzzled a metric fuck ton <laughs> of human piss. I think I had sexual contact with around 15 men. 15 guys. 15, and there was 15 to 20 before, and then yeah. it was a couple in between. This man is like shattering yeah. my number. Yeah. And he did this in three days. Three days, man. <laughs> Crazy. This guy smashed like an entire esports tournament. <laughs> what? That's like 12 Rocket League teams, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 12 Rocket yeah. League duo teams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just ran through. Similar to the orgy on Saturday, uh, it, it, referring to the amount of men that he had sex with. Had a great time. Met some great people. Then stumbled my piss drunk ass home. On Friday, I had a few quick <laughs> hookups with local guys, three total. And on Saturday, I have a four way with some local piss pigs. <laughs> There's a couple of local piss pigs. What is a piss pig? You know what a piss pig is. <laughs> what is it? I, I honestly don't know, but my best guess would be like 
you know, pigs like to roll around in the mud. Yeah. You know, so it's, is it that? Is it someone who likes to get pissed on and they're rolling around like <laughs> oinking? Yeah, sort of, but they're, they're paying to get peed on and they have a family that doesn't know about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like they go to church and stuff and everyone thinks they're this really straight line guy, but then. But in private. Friday at midnight. It's real piss pig hours. Yeah, he's like, babe, I want to pee on you. Yeah. Or I want you to pee on me. So anyway, nothing on Sunday, though I did make plans to film the following Thursday rather than on Monday when I usually film, which would turn out to be a good thing. Uh, come Monday, and my cough seems to come back. I don't think much of it, as I was, I was still experiencing that intermittent long COVID cough I mentioned. Uh, but this was it, back with quite a vengeance. I opted to wait until Thursday to do any fucking, just to be sure. Tuesdays when shit hits the fan. Cough is still bad, uh, but in the evening, a wave of exhaustion suddenly hits me. I get in bed around 7.30, thinking maybe I'll get some extra sleep, and I realize I can literally feel the heat coming off my skin. I must have a fever. Now, him saying he's exhausted at this point is really impressive to me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you're not tired. After fucking 30 dudes. It, if, like, forget having sex at the first orgy. Just being at it. Mm. My social battery would be down immediately. <laughs> Not even from the sex? I'd be tired from talking. <laughs> walking in the place. Just like, If I had to talk to like four or five people, they like, yeah, who do you know? It's, uh, <laughs> you want to fuck so now? That's so funny thinking about this as an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> you want to fuck too? Yeah, it just sounds like, you know, the small talk. That just really turns me off. Oh, bro. I, I yeah. couldn't go to an, a piss orgy just because of the talking. Yeah. My, I, I couldn't even make it to that point. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah, just hearing about your day and then smashing mm -hmm. and then doing that again. Nah, I'm out of there. Uh, starting to, it's starting to sink in now. I screw my courage to my goddamn sticking place, literally, and reach down and feel around my hole. And there it is. Little bumps on the inside of my ass cheeks. I had the pox. The rest of it is is whatever. He's he's got monkey pox. And uh it's basically him trying to like discern where he got it from. Yeah. Like what night it was mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But um yeah, that's the thread. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So I guess the moral here would be uh don't go to any orgies. Yeah, I mean, if you're concerned about getting monkeypox, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe take a sabbatical from. I don't think that's orgies. just. I don't think that's just orgies, though. I think like you know that could be or can it, is it even sexually transmitted? How do you get it? I, I don't know. I don't. I I thought that maybe they would be really. It funny. was a myth that it was. <laughs> would be really funny if it's not from sex and it's just like he shared drinks with someone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone out of all those 30 dudes, it's just him and one other guy. Yeah, yeah no, we're all good. Yeah. It's because you guys were within six feet of each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why the piss orgies work because you can pee eight feet away from each <laughs> yeah, other. That's a, it's a socially distanced piss orgy. Yeah. It's it's outdoors. Yeah. They just you're just peeing in a fucking super soaker and then just hi. Yeah. <laughs> I, just I mean, like, I just think, I just think, sorry, it just looks like a fucking, like, a team building event. Like, people just drive by a park. Yeah. There's all these dudes out there with super soakers, like, laughing and shit, <laughs> and they're, like, spread out in a strange way. <laughs> oh, it must be some corporate event. <laughs> it just says wet and hot on it. Oh, I wonder if that's the Oracle uh, team building thing. Yeah, they do that in the summers here sometimes. Yeah. Fucking bold. Summer in Palm Springs. <laughs> Hats off to them. Anyway, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say it's it's. I mean, I don't know how I don't know how monkeypox is transmitted. Yeah, but I think I don't know if you can be surprised if you catch anything from drinking a metric fuck ton of piss. Yeah, because I guess it's not sterile. I guess that's a myth. Yeah. So I don't know, dude. Bear Grylls did it for forever. That's his own piss, though. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of piss, though, I really have to piss. So do you actually? Yeah, I'm Why don't gonna you go ahead and pee. Do you want me to save it? <laughs> I don't know. There's a couple of local piss pigs out here that really want to get a whiff of it. Well, guys, Cody's going to milk his little bee dick clear of its honey. So 
We'll see you all in the bonus with more riveting conversation. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh, he tricked them. Movie magic. This week on the bone zone. Pour on the floor. Let me pee on you. Wait for me to hit him <laughs> with my car. As a straight guy, you never just get free head like that. I would like you to come over tonight so I can give you head. Just head. Watch the full episode by signing up for a membership at tmgstudios.tv. <laughs>